Welcome, my name is Maarten and I am GPU poor. I cannot run 70 billion parameter models on my tiny, tiny laptop. Instead, I use compression methods like quantization so that I can run these models without the need of an overly expensive GPU. In this tutorial, we will go through such quantization methods and we will find out which one is right for you. Let's get started. As always, we start with the Google Colab notebook and the link you will find in the description. Throughout this notebook, we will go through different quantization methods. The very first thing that we start with is actually enabling our GPU. Making sure that you have your GPU enabled helps running some of these models and some quantization methods require it. We start installing a number of packages that we're using throughout this example and that we're using for some of these quantization methods. But the thing that we're starting with is loading in our large language model. And we're doing that without any tricks, without any quantization, without any compression. The model that we're using is the Zephyr 7B model. It's a small, incredibly accurate model that will work well throughout this example. We simply run this piece of code and I've already cached some of these uh, shards. So it would load those in. After having loaded in our model with basic transformers, we need to create our prompt template. We're gonna ask the model, tell me a funny joke about large language models. But by doing that, we need to make sure that the prompt template fits the large language model. So it has certain tokens to differentiate the system with the user. The prompt template looks a little bit like this. We have a token that indicates the system prompt. So you are a friendly chatbot or something else that generally describes the situation. After that, we have an end of sequence token. And that end of sequence token basically tells us, okay, we're done with whatever type of context or token was before. So after the system prompt, we have the user instruction or user prompt, where we ask the model, tell me if any joke about large language models. We end that with an end of sequence token, to indicate, okay, we're done with asking our question. After that, we have the answer of the model will be outputted after this. But by using the internal tokenizer, we can apply this chat template automatically and we don't have to type this every time we create a prompt. After doing this, we simply run the pipeline with a few parameters and it will output the text. After running the model, we get an output like this. We will see the prompt template that we used before with the response of the large language model. Why did the large language model go to the party to network and make new connections, of course. There is a trick though that happens during loading this model and that's called sharding. And sharding essentially splits up a large language model into smaller pieces so that we can easily load in the large language model without running into memory issues. Instead of loading the entirety of the model, piece by piece tends to be a little bit less taxing for your memory. There's a small piece of code here to do this where you can specify the size of each shard. But the model that we loaded in before was already sharded, so we didn't have to do that ourselves. But here's a small code for you to use if you want to do it yourself. Next, let's explore quantization methods. What we normally do with models is we represent their values with a something called a float 32-bit representation. It's a large way of representing values. And if we find a way to compress the way we can represent these values, so we use less bits, the memory necessary to load in these models and to use these models will become less taxing for your GPU memory. So what we have here is a float 32 bit representation, um, which has a number of bits it needs to accurately represent a value. And if we lower the number of bits, we obviously need less bits to represent these values. And as a result, we need less memory to do so. But the way you lower these number of bits has a huge effect on the quality of the representations. To illustrate, Let's take this example. Let's say we have a value of 0.1234. And if we take that in the float 32 bit representation, it's rather accurate, right? It has a few zeros after this. Uh, it doesn't do perfect representation because you know there's an infinite number of zeros after this, but it rounds it to, up to a certain extent. The float 16 though is already less accurate because it has less bits to represent that initial value. In a way it has to do some guesses and it nears the original 
value very well, but it still makes some mistakes. Now, at some point, those mistakes aren't necessarily an issue, the more they are after the comma, right? Now with bfloat16, which is a rather well-known way of representing, you see the same thing. It doesn't perfectly create the original representation, but that isn't always necessary as long as we come quite close to that value. And the same applies to large values. And with large values, you can see that even with float16, it cannot represent it perfectly because it basically returns infinite. Now, what we do through quantization is we typically use 4-bit normal float. Now, it's a little bit more complex than the ones that we saw previously, but generally what it does, it normalizes the values of the, the, the weights of the model into a normal distribution. And because it then forms a normal distribution, we can split it up into evenly spaced values. Because there is some structure to the values that we have, we can do that quantization in 4-bit a little bit easier. It's a more efficient way of representing that. We store it in 4-bit, but during inference, we can dequantize those 4 bits into something like bfloat16 to improve the performance during inference. So there's a difference between saving, storing them in 4-bit and then using them for inference. To use 4-bit quantization, we can delete any models previously created, but generally I simply like to restart the runtime. That way we don't have any, you know, variables messing around or stuff that's still on the GPU. We're doing this 4-bit quantization with bits and bytes. And bits and bytes gives us a configuration on how to do this quantization. We want to do a 4-bit quantization with normal float 4-bit. And during inference, we're going to use bfloat16 because it increases performance a little bit. So we run this piece. And then after that, we define the model that we're going to be quantizing. Here we're using Sephir 7b and we're using the configuration that we previously created. We run this and it might take a while because it has to load in the model and do the quantization. After having loaded our model and performed the quantization, we can use the prompt that we created previously and simply run it to the pipeline as we did originally. And what you will get, similar output. Why did the large language model go to the party to network and make connections? And it goes on and on and on and on. This 4-bit quantization is amazing to use because it lowers the amount of RAM that you need, the amount of VRAM. It also maintains a certain degree of accuracy, which is great. But loading the model in and then doing the quantization really doesn't make sense. So what we're going to explore are a number of pre-quantization methods. Pre-quantization is essentially what we did before. We loaded in the model, we quantized it to 4-bit or whatever representation that you have, and that new representation, you can save that somewhere in many different formats and use that to load in instead of having to load in the unquantized model first. These quantized models are given us by a user named the bloke. If you go to his page, you will find thousands of models he has created for us to use easily. They're all quantized models, pre-quantized models that allow us to skip over the quantization ourselves and quickly load in these models. However, there are a number of formats that are being used, AWQ, GGUF, and GPTQ. Those are the three most common quantization methods that are out there. But knowing which one to choose can be rather tricky. So let's go through some of the most common examples uh, that we see. The most well-known method is GPTQ, which is a post-training quantization method for, again, 4-bit quantization. One of the most important things to note here is that it focuses on GPU inference and performance. Other methods might focus on, the, on using on the CPU. This one is primarily GPU inf inference. Again, we can delete any models we created previously, but let's simply restart the runtime. Now to do this, to load a GPTQ model, there are a number of ways to do that, but we want to use it within the Hugging Face pipeline just to make it easily comparable to all of the other methods that we use so far. So to do that, it's relatively straightforward. We assign or we give a model ID. We say, okay, we're gonna use GPTQ. And we load in a tokenizer and the automotive or causal LM. It's important that you also identify which revision of this quantization you want. There are many forms, but we typically choose the main one that works relatively well. After loading in this model, 
we can run it the same way as we did before. We have the prompt, you know, tell me a funny joke about large language models. And again, the pipeline that we can run as we generated before. Why did the large language model go to the party? To make some small talk. And, and then it explains a lot of things about what large language models are. They're not yet advanced enough to carry on a natural conversation like a human. I'm not entirely sure about that. Especially if you take a look at GPT-4, it definitely does. But either way, GPT-Q allows us to do fast inference on the GPU with 4-bit quantization without the need to do the quantization ourselves, which is amazing. The next way of doing this quantization to use a pre-quantized model is through GDUF, which was formerly known as GGML, which you might have seen before. The focus here is on CPU, and although a GPU is much more faster than using a CPU, these models are becoming smaller and smaller, easier to use, and at some point, instead of having 7 billion parameter models, we might have 1 billion parameter models. Because there's always some sort of optimization and efficiency trick that we can use to better represent these values. We're restarting the runtime, and instead of just using transformers, we can use something called C transformers. And it's a C++ uh, version of Transformers for us to load in the GGUF format. So again, the bloke, of course, server 7B. This time, there's a parameter called GPU layers. And what that means is that we can offload some of the initial model to the GPU. So we can do a mix of CPU and GPU. So although this GGUF format is focused on the CPU, we can still leverage a GPU if you have you know, a very small one, a tiny one, but will still want to use some of its power. Now that the model has loaded, indeed, a little bit over four gigabytes, we again can use this prompt and run it through the pipeline to see if it can create a, a valid response. So why did the large language model go to the party to impress everyone with its vocabulary? As you might notice, the types of outputs all remain relatively similar and that's a very good thing because it shows that even though we're compressing the model we're doing quantization tricks it still generates a very similar response and we want to make sure that the performance doesn't decrease that much because a smaller representation typically results in a less performant model now the last way of doing this uh, quantization another semi common format it's a new one it's activation aware weight quantization which essentially means that like GPTQ, it does the quantization, but it focuses on weights that are more important than others. Because, you know, some weights are not as important, important for the performance of an LLM. So a small fraction of weights will be skipped during quantization, and that generally helps with the quantization loss. To use AWQ, what we need to do is we need to disconnect and delete the entire runtime. And the reason for this is the dependencies have some conflicts. So if we disconnect and delete runtime, when we do this pip install of VLLM, it helps us ignore all of these other dependencies that were very specific to GPTQ and GTUF. So we run this, it might take a while. After installing VLLM, which is the main package that we're using for running AWQ quantization, we can simply load in the parameters and the model. So again, bloke, sever 7 b beta, AWQ. And here we can define the sampling parameters that we're using, things like uh, temperature, top P, the number of tokens it can generate, etc. Unfortunately, I could not, could not find a package that could easily be loaded into the hugging phase pipeline, but this process works relatively well. And it's a, it's a very solid, well-built package to be used. So after we have loaded in our model, server 7b beta awq, we again define the prompt using the template that we created before. You are a friendly chatbot. Tell me a funny joke about large language models. And we can generate the output through the generate function. So the sampling parameters, we created them before. Uh, so instead of doing it during generation, like we did with the pipeline, we define them beforehand. And again, it does something very similar to network and expand its vocabulary is the joke here. Uh, why did the large language model blush? <laughs> because it was saying, uh, because I overheard another model saying it was a little too wordy, which is definitely the case because it goes on and on and on and on. 
But this is an example of doing quantization with a method like AWQ. And that was it for all of the quantization methods. The most common methods, GPTQ, GTUF, AWQ, you will find them typically on the hugging phase and you can load them in quite easily. But to know which quantization method is actually right for you, it depends on a number of things. If you have a GPU that's large enough to hold your entire model without compression, go for that. If you have a GPU that is not ready to hold in the entire model, GPTQ is the very first step that you take into this quantization methods. And if you have a very, very small GPU, but you still want to play around with large language model, GGUF is an amazing method. AWQ is new, is doing amazing things, but might take a little while for it to be integrated within common packages and common methods. So to choose the quantization methods, definitely try them out. See what works best for you. If you have any question, leave them in the comments. Uh, if you have any feedback, I would love to hear it. And as always, I'll see you next time.